take a shot every time I say back in the day. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. I'm Makeup Maria from Miami. If you're living your best life in your mid plus plus years, or you love skincare and makeup, this is the place for you. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're not, why don't you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Today is a throwback Thursday drugstore edition. And I wanted to do this because I, I like looking back. I like throwbacks and I also even though I'm a lover of luxury products, I know that there are good, affordable products out there and that not everyone can afford the luxury products. And so it's not a bad idea to delve in that area from time to time. Don't want to purchase a lot of drugstore products because typically I really don't use them. I end up just giving them away. But I did have some handy that I hadn't used in a while, so I wanted to try them on and see how they you know, set on my face, see if my opinions have changed and take you on that journey with me. So if that sounds good to you, hang on. The first product I like to talk about is the Milani eyeshadow primer. This is was very popular back in the day and I think it actually merits the popularity. I think it's very moisturizing but not too oily. You have to mix it and it works pretty much as well as other primers that are a lot more expensive. I do prefer my Anastasia just because that one blots out the discoloration in my eyelids, but if you don't if you're not looking for that and if you're looking for an eyeshadow primer that sets down dries uh, enough for so that eyeshadow will stick and not and blend well still and last long i think that it's a really nice product i wouldn't necessarily use it anymore though because like i said i do like the anastasia but i think that it's a worthwhile product to purchase if you're interested if you're if you're looking for an eyeshadow an affordable eyeshadow primer so that's that the next product is the l'oreal infallible 24-hour fresh wear and it's, this is not the right color for me. And I knew that it needed to be a little, it need a little more moisture. So I mixed it with my Estee Lauder foundation, which I do typically even with my high-end foundation. So I figured that that was fair. I liked the way it set. At first, I, I, I was kind of happy with it. I was surprised. But then I did notice that it started to not sink into the fine lines and exacerbate the pores so i actually and ended up adding a little bit of powder just in my t-zone so but but i think that you know if you have oily skin then this is probably a nice foundation for you i just think that the foundations nowadays formulations are better and better and the prices for drugstore have gone up i think you're i think a good foundation is an investment that's worthwhile i think that you can find you have to shop around you can get samples and find a foundation that's a little higher end that will be worthwhile but I, you know i don't know i'm not a drugstore expert but i know that i wouldn't i wouldn't wear this again i am not happy with the results on my skin so that's my opinion on that one then what i really did like was the butter bronzer that everybody loved back in the day and for good reason it had that uh, lovely <laughs> smell coconutty smell that you know if you like it you like it I, I i don't mind it i think it's nice and what i was really surprised in more than anything was the color uh, bronzer is the color i guess for me this color is lovely i mean i think that this was you know a very nice color for my skin it went on well it blended i was really surprised it's it's definitely a contender for the higher end for me and this, this was the first bronzer that I ever wore, actually, because I didn't even wear bronzer back in the day. And uh, when people were online uh, on YouTube, when I started watching beauty YouTube, first I started with Lisa Eldridge, and then I started watching other people, and people were talking about this product, and I, and mostly Nikki tutorials, you know, uh, I was a big fan, I am a big fan. And she talked about this and I, and I bought it and I think it's a really worthwhile product. So I was very surprised 
it has how much I like the application. So that's that. And that is the, is that Milani? Oh gosh, I don't know what it is. I think it's Milani. So the next product is also Milani and it is the baked, it's a baked blush in Luminoso. Again, another product that everybody on YouTube was talking about and it's got some shimmer and it's got a really nice color. It's the color that I like very much. It's kind of a cross between a, a peachy pink, which is a color that I like very much and I think suits me. And I think it looks really great. I do. But I think that, again, when it comes to blushes, there are so many wonderful formulations of blushes nowadays that I, I don't think I would repurchase this or really reach for it, to be honest. But I was surprised. It looks very nice. It blended well and it's a pretty color. So I like it. I think it was interesting. I actually didn't wear blush either. <laughs> for a makeup lover, I really was obsessed with foundations more so than the other products so I didn't wear a lot of blush I remember I had a Chanel blush that I purchased that I hardly used but this I did use and I wouldn't necessarily use today but I can see why there was so much hype about this product okay moving on to concealer this is the Maybelline new instant age rewind erases dark circles and this was also very hype. By the way, I am wearing, obviously, all the products on my face. I did not like this. I think it was okay. I have lots of concealers. Again, I feel like the formulations have changed. They've gotten better. Probably even in the drugstore, you can find a better formulation, even though this was very much hyped. But I honestly was surprised how thick it was and how much it exacerbated the fine lines and didn't really cover the my dark circles very well so I would I would pass on this not going to reach for this but I do remember the hype the hype was real back in the day. so the lip liner that I use another surprise was the NYX lip liner in nude truffle and here's the color so you can see it close up and I'll do a little swatch very very nice uh, another surprise this went on very smoothly it didn't dry my lips out um was easy and let me tell you i'm i'm really particular about lip liner i'm very excited about this i thought this was wonderful i think that it laid down a nice base for my lipstick it was a great color for my skin and it didn't compete too much and i liked it i liked it a lot for me that right combination of soft enough so it doesn't scratch my lips or, or rub or tug at my lips, but soft enough so it blends well and doesn't dry out my lips, that's a, that's a tough combo for lip liners. And I love my luxury lip liners, but this I think can compete with, not with my Sisley, because Sisley is really, really, really good, but the other Sephora-ish priced Lip liners, I think this actually does, I might actually reach for this. <laughs> so the next category is uh, lips. I combined the Maybelline New York uh, Matte Ink, Superstay Matte Ink Lip Liner, which I knew was gonna be drying, with a Ma Maybelline Baddest Beige, kind of like a lip balm, and number, number 50. Whoops, okay. So I'll swatch both of these too. Okay. It's a nice texture, the lip balm. Actually, I didn't mind the liquid lipstick either. I just love the color more than anything. So there it is. That was the, the trio lip combination that I tried today. And I have to say the lip balm is nice. And I love the matte super stay but again you know it does my lips do feel dry and even though i put the lip balm on top i think most likely the lip balm didn't have enough moisturizing properties to keep the matte lip from drying out my lips oh and also i'm actually not that crazy about the color Okay, to recap the lip situation, 
I really like the NYX lip liner. I would not really a fan of the Superstay Matte Ink Maybelline because liquid lips, there just doesn't work on mature lips. Love, love the color and the consistency is quite nice too. It's actually quite thin. <clears throat> the lip balm is very nice. Not that crazy about the color. Uh, the only reason it worked today is because I put it on top of the hot pink. Otherwise, it would it would definitely wash me out. And it's it's got a nice consistency as well. It's actually a little thicker than you would expect. But again, I think that's because a lot of the luxury brands have come with come up with this is this type of formula has been all the rage this year um, and last year, and so it does have a nice shine. But the consistency of this one is a little thicker than what you find out there and it's a little sticky which I'm not I'm not a fan of so I don't think I would repurchase this nor would I recommend it so for the eyes for the eyes I pulled out my and I didn't really have drugstore eyeshadow so I decided to cheat again and use some of the MAC eyeshadows that I had I'm not I'm sorry they're not MAC eyeshadows they're makeup geek eyeshadows and so i used this this one right here which is preppy and that was gorgeous i loved it very much i was surprised how much i loved it and i used this peachy color which was peach smoothie which is really nice too i enjoyed that it went on super strong and then i used to line my eyes i used corrupt and they held up Oh wait, and then I also used in the corner of my eyes Shimmer Shimmer. I mean, if you guys were YouTube beauty people back in the day, that is not going to be anything that you haven't heard before. And I have to say, I think I thought they actually worked really well. I think that they didn't work well in the areas of when I put the concealer because the concealer was a little drying and so that didn't blend well, but the rest of them were super pigmented, blended well. I was I was surprised. I really think that Makeup Geek's products are amazing. And these are the old formulas. I know she's come out with a lot of new products. I think she just released some makeup brushes and now I'm gonna kinda delve into Makeup Geek again because this was a nice surprise. I did not expect to be as happy with the eyeshadow as I was. Okay, so since I typically don't do a lot of drugstore products reviews, I thought I'd throw in some honorable mentions that I like very much and that I do use. I use the Neutrogena Oil-Free Makeup Remover. I think it's wonderful. I've tried the Clinique, I've tried others. I think this works really, really well. I usually do some type of balm or oil to take off my makeup, but I always use something that for my eyes, at least you know, for the first layer, because sometimes it takes a lot to uh, take off eye makeup. As far as the tanner for the legs, I use the Airbrush Sally Hansen. I think this stuff is great. This is the spray. I don't spray it on. I usually put it on my hand and then wipe it in. But the cream is great too. It's much better than a lot of the more expensive stuff. So, uh, And I love to Aquaphor. I've mentioned this before. I always have an Aquaphor handy for my lips because you know mature lips they get dry and so you need to moisturize them all the time and so just wanted to talk a little bit about those products that oh wait there's one more too I have the L'Oreal Elnet hairspray that again was very popular back in the day and I think it still holds up that's another product that I think that uh, is drugstore and works quite well. If you want to create a throwback Thursday video with high-end products, please comment below if you're interested in that or if there are particular products that you would like me to try. So that's it. That's my lockdown memory lane. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you continue to watch and wear sunscreen and take care of yourself. Be kind to yourself. Thank you. Bye. Keep watching. Give it a thumbs up. Thank you.